Bitcoin is kind of coiled here to make a move up. Now, whether it goes to 22.5, which would be this upsloping kind of channel line here, Hello everyone, today our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway talks about the Fed's rate hikes, inflation, risk assets, Bitcoin, gold, stocks, and his predictions for short, mid, and long term. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin starts the second week of November battling some familiar FUD. How will BTC price action react? The largest cryptocurrency managed a weekly close just below $21,000 on November 6, an impressive multi-week high, but remains fixed in a sticky trading range. Despite seeing highs of nearly $21,500 over the past week, there has yet to be a catalyst capable of breaking the market status quo, but the coming week has as good a chance as any of doing so. November 10 will see key United States inflation data for October released, while jobless claims and multiple speeches from Federal Reserve officials may also impact risk asset volatility. An unexpected twist from within the crypto realm comes in the form of turmoil involving Exchange, FTX, Alameda Research, and Binance. Concerns over liquidity have escalated as Binance CEO, Chengping Zhao reveals a plan to sell off his platform's entire stash of FTX's proprietary token. Bitcoin reacted in line with market sentiment overnight, but going forward, will the debacle prove any more than classic crypto FUD? With the 75 basis point hike, which we all expected, right? That was already priced into the market. Um, the verbiage did change in the statement, and that was the key initially to why the markets took off to the upside. Basically, Jerome Powell said that they're going to take into account past rate hikes and how the how the lagging indicator or the lagging impact of it will affect the markets. And that was something new that wasn't in any past statements, which tells us that they are aware that these rate hikes that they've been hammering the market with take a while to be filtered through. So they don't want to overdo it and cause a collapse. Now, the, the S&P 500 just ripped higher. I don't know if we can show my screen here, but certainly um, we just ripped higher i mean you can see on that statement just that alone and then what's crazy is that we're at 10 minute candles right yep correct okay. 10 minute candles so this is intraday so the initial reaction was one of huge emphasis and excitement he's finally kind of toning it down he's going to take care here and then he came on the press conference and was still a little bit more on the hawkish side maybe potentially still saying 50 basis points in December and the markets didn't like that. And we've seen the markets come down very, very quickly. And what's crazy about this, right? I mean, it doesn't look super big, but these candles are massive. We're talking about, you know, from this low here to this high, it's almost, you know, it's basically one and a half percent on the S and P. And then to down here, it's about 2%. So for the S&P, these are humongous moves, maybe not in crypto, but for the S&P, it is humongous moves. Do you think that the crypto market is going to catch up, correlate and follow what's going on with the stock markets? Yeah, I mean, it's in general, it does to some extent. And what's interesting here is that we did see the initial pop on the, the Bitcoin chart and we did see it come back in. But the one weird thing about crypto is it's been very muted in terms of the volatility, right? So, so we haven't seen when the S and P has been dropping, you know, two, 3% a day, crypto's actually held up relatively well. And today, again, you can see crypto. I mean, basically from where the statement started, we're essentially flat. I mean, maybe even slightly positive here. We're starting to get a little bit of a bounce up. So, so it is interesting to see how the crypto market has almost been the calm market. When you look at the, the currency markets, the stock market, the commodities market, it's actually been the, the chill market because of the dollar's strength and the stress that it's been putting on the pound, the euro, the Japanese yen, I do think that there's a certain amount of investors in those countries that have said, hey, listen, let me maybe go into, you know, Bitcoin as protection in this wilder currency Forex market. Um, and then I think bottom line is too, is there's this calm, weird calm in the, in the Bitcoin and the crypto market as everyone's waiting for the judge's decision on Ripple, right? is coming mm -hmm. later this month, I think. And then also just any sort of regulation from Gary Gensler. And I think that once the midterms are over, that's where you could see that 
kind of clarification on uh, on the crypto market. So I think it's a combination of a lot of things that are keeping it a little bit more sideways choppiness right now. To me, that's one of the more important reasons for the Fed to kind of stop hiking is that if they hike too much more, the dollar is going to strengthen. And at some point you will see a catastrophic credit collapse, a, a, a money collapse in some of these other countries. There's no doubt. I mean, any any time you end up making the banks hold on to more money and not able to lend it out, that will have the impact of meaning less money in the system, which inevitably would bring down inflation. I think the Fed is trying to do it from the opposite side, right? By raising interest rates so much, essentially it's making the consumer. So you're talking from the banking side, but by raising interest rates, you're making the consumer basically say, I can't afford a mortgage payment of with 7% interest or 7.5% interest. And so it kind of works in that side of the equation. But I agree that you could tackle it on that side, absolutely. Yeah, so I, I still think that we have some upside. And again, we still have this beautiful bullish channel or, or pattern forming right here. We broke out of this little wedge pattern down here. So I do think that Bitcoin is kind of coiled here to make a move up. Now, whether it goes to 22.5, which would be this upsloping kind of channel line here. Um, 20, well, that's 25, right? Or to 22.5, which is right here. That's the question. And I don't know how much fuel is in the tank on Bitcoin. I think a lot is going to have to do with, you know, what the Fed ends up doing. How does the dollar react? If we actually see the dollar starting to weaken, then that's very, very bullish for cryptocurrency and specifically Bitcoin. Crazy, and I think a, a couple of things that are worth noting here is so initially when the Fed changed their verbiage in the statement, we saw the dollar collapse really quickly. And then during the press conference, we've seen the dollar roar back. And what's interesting here is that the market had pointed expectations before this meeting. And basically, we're saying we expect by a certain point in 2023 to have a Fed funds rate of 5%. And essentially, we're still at that point, right? We're still at this you know, we're basically trading where the dollar was prior, which tells us that, again, the market, even after this whipsaw, we're kind of back to where we started, where the Fed hasn't pivoted enough to create the dollar to weaken significantly. And again, we're seeing the rally back that's telling us that. So again, I think that's the key takeaway, at least as of now, the dollar is not weakening. So in, in other words, the Fed is still remaining pretty, pretty hawkish here. And what that tells you, honestly, it, what it tells us is that the crypto markets, as well as commodities, currencies, everything, the Fed is controlling it all. I mean, it's almost like the market isn't even a market anymore. It's just a market that's trading based on what the Fed does. The biggest scary thing here is that everything that this market does, and, and we're talking all asset classes, is relying on the Fed. We've become basically attached like a drug dealer with a drug drug addict, right? And the Fed is the drug it. dealer and the markets are the drug addict. And without the Fed, you see what the, the asset prices are doing. They're collapsing. With the Fed, the high can go on. Yeah, so one of the cool things on Ethereum here is that we're, we're actually making a same sort of bullish pattern, but we're right below this resistance here. So the key is if we can make a good enough resistance kind of or, or consolidation pattern, and you pop and you get through that line, you actually have good upside to maybe 2000. And I think it's very possible that if Bitcoin goes to 20, 25 or so, at least you see 2000 on Ethereum uh, in the near term. So I think, again, that would be kind of the target. There's even a small chance 2300 could be seen, which would be this kind of major pivot area right in here. Um, so again, those are the two levels I'm watching. But number one, we got to break through this downsloping resistance level trader every every time the fed comes out with anything we got to kind of reevaluate right now the charts are still holding true but if the dollar starts to rip too much more here and you can see the dollar's now making short-term highs here we're yep. almost taking out the highs from before the fed in fact we are that's i mean if the dollar really continues to strengthen let's say for the next two weeks then the crypto market has no shot you know of, of making a breakout so, okay. so it really becomes really influential on this in terms of what the market is doing and 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 what the Fed is causing in the dollar. And this is, I mean, I, I'm going to look at the S&P, but I've got to imagine the S&P is getting crushed. Yep, S&P now wow. down over 1% on the day. Okay. And uh, let's see if Bitcoin is selling as well here, but I would assume it is. 
Yeah, I mean, there should yeah. be. Uh, yeah, there's obviously going to be that correlation. That's yeah. that's intense. Um, but again, I mean, Bitcoin. I got to say, it's it's holding strong. I mean, considering it's still kind of right around those levels from where it started earlier in the day, it's just been going sideways. So you know, it it seems like Bitcoin doesn't get a huge move up when the Fed was positive or, or when the markets reacted. But at the same time, it's not getting hit too badly here either on the way down. Although it's starting to inch a little bit more. Make me aware of this is that number one. We haven't seen like like you haven't really seen pain yet. We haven't seen people throwing in the towel saying Bitcoin's over. And in all the past cycles where we've had the bearish move, we've seen that happen. In addition, this is the first cycle where the Fed's not printing money, right? So here, the, I think Bitcoin's only down about seventy or seventy-five percent. All past cycles where they've been printing money, it went down eighty-five percent. So who are we to say that? Now the one time where it should go down even more, it's not even going to go to go down eighty to eighty five percent. So, so for me, everything kind of aligns that we should see a move to the downside. But I mean, you know, can't the thing really is, target when we get win, regulation, obviously. it could change. This is, this is the, my thesis for why I'm bullish on metals and Bitcoin partially, not just the charts, but it's basically that we're in a scenario where you have the Fed saying. We understand that the dollar yen, the euro, the pound are at breaking points against the dollar, and therefore we have to be very careful not to let the dollar strengthen too much. So,、um, you know, to me, that if if you see the dollar up for the next week or two, you're going to see a global catastrophic collapse potentially in the charts, and that puts us at risk of a bigger kind of. Contagion aspect, and I think that is something that the Fed, if they're not aware of that, they're they're doing a huge, huge disservice to the overall market. I mean, think about this: the markets are pricing in a a. I would say right now we're pricing in a minor recession, like run of your mill minor recession. The Fed just raised the the Fed funds rate from 0.25 percent to four percent now. That's what is that? I mean, like was that like a thousand percent? I don't even know how many thousands of percents that is of a hike, but. How are we just going to see a minor recession? I don't know.、Um, no, that's why I've mentioned to you before. It's、uh, it's depression. It's not right. It's not right. We're we're out of recession realm. We're going into depression realm. I mean, when you look at the bigger picture and everything that's that's happening.、Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. So to me, to me, I'm in the camp where it's like it's like I, I I'd be so shocked if I mean and think about this. The consumer is still spending. I mean, granted. You know, we we had some money saved up over COVID and so forth. But at some point, if things get bad enough and the jobs market gets bad enough, you're going to see this kind of collapse in the overall system. And and the consumer, once the consumer stops spending and is in shock, that's where you see earnings get revised down dramatically. And and again, whether or not Bitcoin bottoms out, I still have it priced in to go lower because it's still kind of a risk asset. But I do think in this next cycle, this bear cycle, that's where it will make the pivot. To becoming a safety asset versus a a risk asset. The Federal Reserve dominated the last week of October when it came to crypto asset performance thanks to its decision to raise interest rates by another 0.75 percent. As this is implemented, markets will be watching another key figure this week: Consumer Price Index (CPI) data for October. Estimates put year-on-year -year inflation at 7.9 percent. As per economists surveyed by Bloomberg, down 0.3 percent versus September. Any lower than expected CPI redoubt could be a boon for crypto and risk assets, as it notionally increases the chances of the Fed pulling back on rate hikes sooner. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.